Okay, so this video is not really intended to be a video about the EcoFlow River Pro 2. Um, it's not going to really be too much of a, um, a review of this product, although it does play a key role in what I'm doing here, and, and I'll explain. So I'm, I'm in my basement in the unfinished workshop part of it, and back here is where I have my electrical set up. And I have my main panel and a sub panel here. That's all I have. And I have been looking into options for emergency home backup power in the event of an outage. Um, I'm not real worried about solar at this point. I may add solar panels to the house at some point. Uh, I'm in an HOA, so I, I, a ground array is not an option for me. I would have to do them on the roof. And for various reasons, I'm just not ready to make that jump yet. So... One of the things that I am looking at doing is getting a portable power station that's hefty enough to run most of the critical loads that I would want to run. Things like my water heater, sump pump, refrigerator, um, maybe the, the living room where the, the, the modem and, and router are plugged in, things like that. But um, so to do that, I'm looking at some of the portable power stations that are available like the EcoFlow Delta Pro or the Anchor Solex F3800. Uh, both of those will do uh, 240 output and, um, you know, they're scalable. You can add additional battery packs to them. You can run them in parallel. There's all kinds of options down the road. But entry level to get in with the base unit, with the base inverter and a single battery, um, both of those can, you if you look for sales, you can get in under $5,000 for both of them. I know the Anchor starts off less expensive, but it has a smaller smaller battery pack. So anyways, those are some of the things that I'm looking at. Ideally, I would like to be in a situation where it would be automatic in the event that there's a power outage and we're not home, that it would just automatically kick on. Uh, the main reason that I'm interested in doing that is for the sump pump, actually, but that option gets a lot more expensive because then you have to do either a smart home panel two or you have to do something like an inverter that has a pass through with the UPS and all of that involves a much more complicated installation. Um, some of it requires permitting, you know, it's just a, a much more complicated deal. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do here initially is I'm going to start off with just a manual transfer switch that I'm going to install and I can show you kind of what I had in mind here. I think most of you guys, if you're looking at this stuff, you're probably familiar with this one. Um, let me see if I can get on here. So this is something along that line. The one that I'm looking at, Reliance Controls, I'm looking at the one that also has the, uh, the plug included. So you can get into this, something like this for about $450. And that's where this thing comes into play then, because... It doesn't do me a whole lot of good to be to have a backup that's 100% manual if I'm not home and we lose power and the sump pump is currently running. Now, let me show you my why that's a concern for me. Because as you can see, our basement here is finished. So there's, you know, obviously I would not want to lose power and have the sump pump not working if we're not home. So in here, I have this. This is my sump pump setup. So what I did, and as you can see, I do have a battery backup sump pump. This is one of those basement watchdog systems, which I think are fairly common. A lot of people have these, and it actually does work really well. What I have down here in my pit, it's, it's sealed. But what I have in my pit is a dual pump system that you have the main pump and then there's a 12 volt backup pump that's powered by that lead acid car battery or deep cycle battery. And that thing does actually work fairly well in the event of an outage. That thing kicks on and it empties the pit and it does a decent job. And I'll get about a day or two out of that lead acid battery before it would die depending on how much water is coming in the pit, how often it's running. Right now, we're in a situation where it hasn't been raining a whole lot, and the pit is not full, and it's not filling up very fast. So our sump pump currently is only running maybe once every half an hour. 
And of course, you know, it, it kicks on for like three to five seconds is all it takes to empty that pit. And then, it, you know, it, it doesn't run again for about a half an hour. So currently I'd probably get about two, two and a half days out of the batter, out of the uh, basement watchdog with the lead acid battery. So what I did is I picked up this EcoFlow River 2 Pro and I plugged the whole setup into it. Now, as you can see, I currently don't have it plugged in. This is the plug that plugs in the EcoFlow. So right now, everything is running off the battery because I wanted to test it and I wanted to see how this thing would work. And honestly, it's working beautifully. My sump pump is only, when this thing kicks on, I've been watching it close, my sump pump, the main pump, is only pulling 440 watts. Now, the, the River 2 Pro will go up to, it has 800 watts continuous, and then it does this thing where it can jack it up to 1600 watts, but at that point, then it's lowering the voltage, which may not be good for some equipment. I don't think it would hurt a sump pump, but you, you wouldn't want to do that for like a refrigerator or whatever. But anyhow, um... Based on the calculations that I've done and based on what I've been seeing, now this thing's been running on this battery all day. I, I, can't, I unplugged this thing from the wall this morning. Um, I'm guessing I would probably get a full day, if not two full days, out of this thing. And then after that would die, then this could kick on and would run for another maybe two days. So... The, the goal here is to have this set up where, worst case scenario, I would lose power while we're on vacation. And like maybe the power would go out the, the day after we leave and it could be out for up to a week. That's where this system is automatic. This would kick on whether I'm home or not because of the UPS system. So as you can see, like I said, right now it's unplugged and every time that sump pump needs to run, it just automatically does it and if I plug this back in it'll recharge the system and it'll just run as a pass-through so this video is more about the system than it is about that product because there are other small power stations on the market that would also do this I was also looking at the anchor I think it's the C800 um, which actually has a little bit more it has the same battery capacity but it has a little bit more output on the inverter. I think it has a standard 1200 watts where this is a standard 800 watts, but this thing is working beautifully. And this is going to buy me some time until I decide to go ahead and do whatever I'm going to do for the whole house. But for those of you who are interested, those of you who have a sump pump situation where you're, you know, nervous about having an outage when you're not home, this, to me, is, is a pretty neat fix because this alone will buy you at least a day or two, depending on how much your pump is running. And then if you have a, a system like I have, that'll give me an additional day or two. So I've got probably close to a week here where I don't even have to think about it. And then, of course, if I am at home and I have a, a, a full-blown backup system that I can switch over manually at a transfer switch, then it'll take over and, and do even better. But... Anyway, I wanted to throw this out there. I thought it was a neat idea for those of you who might be interested.